On our interview segment, we caught up with the founder home of Mother Ed Foundation, Homef, Mr. Nemo Basi. He spoke to us on a number of issues, including how COP27 is different from COP26 and previous COPs, and whether or not the demands of African negotiators will be met at this COP. Hear him. Uh, well, loss and damage has been the major focus of many delegates at this meeting, especially those from Africa and other vulnerable regions. Uh, but it is looking very clear that whatever may come out of it would not be significantly different from what has been happening to other discussions about climate finance. Climate finance in the past has been all about economics and without looking at the issue of solidarity or empathy without nation, the polluting nation not looking at the impact of global warming on the vulnerable regions. They are not, uh, it, it, it's almost like economics, if you solve, if, if you give some palliatives, the way we say it in Nigeria, and then you've done something. And as long as that mindset remains, this COP will not deliver on anything much different from what we've seen before. Before we've seen, right from 2009, we've seen pledges being made that they will tend billion dollars every year up to 2020 every year to tackle global warming in the vulnerable nations for mitigation issues and thereafter a hundred billion none of these targets was ever met i think there will, there will be definitely if uh, there's no reason to give up uh, on efforts to tackle global warming uh, if at the cop in sham el sheikh for example we're having a lot of meetings by indigenous people by civil society where the real solutions are not just being spoken about, they are documented and made available to negotiators. So it's the issue is to get the negotiators and politicians to wake up to the reality. First of all, first of all, this is not an African cop. We've had cops four times before in Africa, twice in Morocco, once in South Africa, and once in Nairobi. None of this has ever been an African cop. To call this an African COP is to make us, to blind us to the reality of the intensity of the crisis on the continent. It doesn't, it's not an African COP. We are the people, we are the Africans. We are the people under the flood in Nigeria, in Barisa State or, or wherever state in Nigeria. We are the people who are starving in Madagascar. Where are they here? They are not here. Even if they could afford the ticket, they can't afford one night in a hotel in Sham El Sheikh. This is a very exclusive COP for those who could afford to be here. It's not an African COP. African issues are not being debated with the consciousness and the seriousness that they require. And so this is just like any other COP and more exclusive than ever before. Well, loss, loss and damage is, uh, is the easiest thing that those who are responsible can do. Uh, is, is in the sense that loss and damage is talking about uh, harms being brought, felt by be, being in happening to nations or territories or regions due to ongoing climate change events, freak weather events, floods, landslides, droughts, uh, crop failures, all those kind of things. But that can be taken care of by loss and damage. But when you're looking at climate reparation, it means both the loss and damage things happening now and the historically things that have been done historically. So the climate reparation is deeper, it's more holistic. It goes further back and it goes also into the future. It's both intergenerational and also current. And this is what the concept of climate debt also captures. And if we don't look at the deep, deep basis of the problem, then we can also say that the COP itself is lost and damaged. And up 